also Assistant Chief uh, Dickerson here today and those who are gathered about this very important topic. Uh, for those who know me, know that the issue of violence in our community has been a high priority for me for the last 17 years. And one of the reasons I got into this work is because as a younger man, I started losing people around me. Um, and, and I don't want to go back to the many stories, but I've had to bury over 134 people in my 34 years in this community. Uh, and even as I think about the violence in this community today, there was a young lady who was stabbed up this morning on Alabama Avenue. Um, and so our work has to continue. I always say that you cannot conquer anything that you're not committed to. And it's going to take a collective effort to address this violence in our community. And uh, as a leader of this community, that's been a, a high priority for me. Because while I was that young lady today, it could be one of us today or tomorrow. Um, and that's the sad reality we're facing. We're facing a lot of mental health issues in our community, a lot of trauma in our community, a lot of substance abuse in our community, a lot of hopelessness in our community. And so we all must come together to put aside our differences to figure out how we can uh, come to some conclusions, some resolution, and some solution together. Um, so I want to thank uh, the Warning Democrats for hosting this very important topic today because it's very important. I do want to also note that we are pushing, we are budget season on the DC City Council, in which the mayor is preparing her budget. Uh, one of the requests to ask, I asked from the mayor is to put $10 billion into preventive measures, to, to, to preventive measures uh, for youth violence intervention, preventing, not just to, to the police department or to address the after the situation happens, but to try to put boots on the ground. As a former uh, youth violence interrupter, is the new term we use today, uh, I know that we had over 100 people. 150 people in the community doing youth violence prevention work. And right now we probably had about 25. And about two months ago, I had a meeting to go out into the community on a Friday night. And we had a map for all Ward 8. We had about 30 to 40 people in that room. You in that, if you're in that room, raise your hand. You're in that room. And so we did a call for community members to come out. And during that time, we went to the map to try to identify the crews, neighborhoods, and, and, and uh, affiliations that was happening in the community. There used to be about 30 crews in, in Ward 8. We counted about 72 crews in Ward 8. And so we know that as the work continues to grow, uh, we have to put more boots on the ground because we have to be building relationships with, these, with a lot of these individuals to ensure that we can help them tra transition to a healthier lifestyle. From that, I partnered with the Department of Employment Services. Uh, there are organizations in the community that's uh, involved as well from um, uh, uh, National Association for the Advancement of Returning Citizens uh, to J&J Monitor to Far Southeast Collaborative uh, to a uh, number of organizations that gathered uh, with us. I uh, know the Timothy Douglas Hill Foundation to uh, Mama Safe Haven. I don't want to leave nobody out. But you get where I'm going with it. It takes everybody. And so what DOS agreed to do was do a set aside uh, of not just job training with job placement for some of these individuals which you go out to the community to recruit, to stop them from doing something destructive, doing something constructive. And from that, we've engaged about 26 individuals. Of that 26, uh, eight originally started getting into the program, getting paid every day. I know they made calls last week. And they put they designed a new class in Ward 8 for these individuals. Also, Raymond Bell from the Hope Project is trying to figure out of those numbers, those who can pass a certain level of the test can get into IT. Um, and so we've, uh, we've Originally was eight. The last time I heard was additional six, and some of them didn't even didn't show up to the orientation. But you know we have to continue to press forward, and we're going out again this uh, Friday night. So if you're available, um, I know we do meetings about conversations about action items, but the harvest is plentiful, but the labors are always few, always. And so we encourage you, if you are really involved and really concerned about this topic, reach out to somebody because everybody can inform somebody. And so we go out. Late at night, talk to the young men and young ladies that are standing out, and most won't, most people don't engage them and get their content. And they feel comfortable with us because some of them know us personally. They feel comfortable giving us their contact information. We follow up um, and we try to figure out how to address some of the social ills they're facing, not just about getting a job. Because you can get a job and still be doing some of the same stuff you're doing. Um, and so we are conscious of that, and we want you to join us in that effort. So this is Friday night at 6.30 p.m., we will be at... Uh, What's the address of Willow Road? 4135. 4135. Uh, Willow Road Southeast gathered there 
Uh, we go out for at least an hour, hour and a half. Um, if you can join us, that'd be great. They appreciate it. Bring somebody. Um, we appreciate your service. So I'll digress here. I'm supposed to give brief remarks, so I, I will try to honor that. But I'm, it's good to see people in the room. Because it's going to take all of us, not just NPD. We respect the work of NPD, but we have to do it in our own community. We can't wait for nobody to save us but us. And so I want to thank you for having me as a leader.